Hey what's up, this is Layback Luke and welcome to this new vlog! Very happy I have another producer tutorial for you. If you can hum it with your mouth, uh, people can sing it and people can have it stuck in their heads. So what I usually do is just try and start and see what is like the logical progress of this type of melody. So I like to move it, move it. So that's a little bit too similar. Let's change it up a little bit. When you're looking for presets, try not to make a, a preset from scratch. I could in FM8, um, but there's a ton of presets out there that have been developed by guys that professionally do this at, for a living. They don't make tracks, they don't make songs, they develop sounds. Um, so there's no shame in grabbing a preset. So this uh, kind of sounds cool, although it has a couple of harsh elements in there that uh, I just want to take out. So let's uh, let's dive into the matrix. Um, yeah, so I might just change the waveform. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Much better. Okay, so that's cool. So the ground note. Is a C as you can see here at C4 and then it goes into a G so the chords you can grab here could be like a C chord and a G chord let's just grab a new FM because I'm addicted to FM right now a C chord is very simple it's a C E and G that's a C chord C minor chord you lower the E and that's a C minor. This is happy. This is a little bit sad. G chord has the same kind of intervals in between the notes, so that would be a G, B, and D. This is a major. This is a minor. So in this case, I'm suspecting we should use the minor chords. Let me see. That works, so it sounds a little bit plain, so I might need to fool around with it a little, a little bit. So I'm, I'm just gonna add, how do you say that in English? A B flat, I believe it's in English. We call it bass in Dutch. So I'm just gonna record that. So that'll be eight bars. So now I have the chords, I could vary with it. So obviously this is a quite quite of a boring pattern the mouth the mouth is super important let me see I mean I'm not making a super serious track right now but I'm just showing you what you can do with uh, with melodies if you don't understand how chords work go and look it up on YouTube there's chords Although it's music, it's really all math. Everything has its own algorithm, so if you found out the chords, there's a baseline structure to that. Bass lines usually play the chord structure, or along the notes of the chord structure, and if not, they play along the tonal scale. Grabbing this for fun, so C minor is basically this chord scale. So along those lines it needs to fit. And then, you know, when it goes into G, you'll need to... You'll need to keep it in, in those sections. So you can do it very simple. C, 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 G, 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 G. Trying to find another preset for the chords. So 
So maybe an extra layer for the lead, so it'll pop a bit more. Sometimes FM really sounds FM and that's a tricky one. Obviously this is just a sketch and you can add as much stuff as you want so I, I still love the, all the vengeance like snares and claps. It's that simple so you can fit things together like that. If you really know the chords you are playing and in what tone scale you are in then it's very easy to add as much melodies as you want. The key to a good mix and the key to a loud mix is not pushing everything to the max, it's finding the right balance in between everything. For instance, if you have a super loud kick and a really low melody, then the perception will be that your uh, melody sounds thin or maybe the kick drum sounds really big. The other way around, if you put the, the lead up really loud and the kick very low, the lead could be sounding very loud but the kick would be perceived as very weak. And so somewhere in between is that edge where the lead will sound fat and the kick will sound fat. And it's basically all about perception. So let me dive into my track Fantasizing, uh, which has a lot of elements in there. Play by ear and show you what I'll do with just the volumes, not even EQing. I would solo out the kick drum. And then I would see how the other elements would fit on there. So um, add the clap. Okay, so the clap, maybe right now the clap should be a little bit louder than it was and that's fine. So the kick and the clap, maybe, so see how the hi-hat sounds with that. Some chord work. But I am actually listening and comparing it to the kick drum still. But you can do it the, the other way around as well. So and just by ear, note, not by looking at the meters, I'll just try and balance everything out. So bass line sounds good with the chords now. Let's see how the bass line sounds with the kick drum now. A little bit louder. Cool. Add the chords. So if you have a really full mix and you've been working on it for a while, try just to solo out the kick drum and then just go into every separate element and see where they can fit into each other volume wise and after that you will notice your mix is much more open and makes much more sense. This is a very difficult point for a lot of young and up-and-coming producers. You don't need to invent the wheel again. Take your favorite track, uh, just write down how the arrangement is. And if you do that with a couple of tracks you'll see similarities in the arrangement. This is my track the Chase with GTA and Aruna. So intro beats. Let me add a marker. Intro beats. So that's the first eight bars. Oh, so after four, we add a clap. Add clap. And so in the intro beats, you can hear there's only a kick drum in the vocal. A little snare so then after four you add the clap after eight bars there's like the hi-hat loop uh, hat loop the chords come in as well just slowly filtered and then uh, we add a little uh, whoosh 
on the last floor. So now you have 16 bars of intro where you already have a blueprint of what you need to do and what you need to add. So usually after 16 bars we have the, the first drop. So first drop. Add beats bass. So that's after 8. Climax. And usually the climax lasts about 8 bars as well. You can set like notes as well. So a climax is like a uh, rolling snare drum, added whoosh, filtering out bass, uh, repeating of vocal or vocal cutting. You can really all note that from your favorite tracks. And then we have the drop. So this is drop one. But what's important is what happens after eight bars into the drop. Usually people are uninspired, so let's see. Add hats plus a vocal play. So I'm saying vocal play because we switch up the vocal a little bit. You could see this in a lot of professional tracks is that uh, after eight bars, hi-hats are added or a ride. Uh, usually something percussive. So there you have it, that's, that's your blueprint. Take two or three of your favorite tracks and lay them out like this. And really note what changes every eight bars or even after every four bars. And so then you have an overview of what's happening in all these professional tracks. And then when you make your own track, you could just pull up like this blueprint of like, oh, I'm supposed to add hi-hats here. Oh, I'm supposed to switch this up. And then you'll see you become much less stuck in your arrangement than you used to. So this was it. Happy you're tuned back in again. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I love making these for you and I would love to do more. This was Laidback Luke signing off. It's all about the true story and the real life. See you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.